Another week has passed since we checked in on Universal Epic Universe. During that time, BioReconstruct has done it again and provided us with new aerial views of the construction progress of Epic Universe. From the first concrete inside of the Parisian streets, to the first boat ride in the water at Fire Drill, and both ponds in front of Atlantic Restaurant have been painted bright blue. All of this and more on this week's Universal Epic Universe Construction Update with our aerial views provided to us as always by BioReconstruct. Before we begin, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you do not miss the next Universal Epic Universe Construction Update. This week's update has taken a few extra days than normal due to taking care of some family stuff, but next update we should be back on track. Starting this week's update at the back of Epic Universe at Helios Grand Hotel. Workers can be seen guiding a steel beam into place on the center dome of the hotel. These main beams should be complete within a week or so. Once those beams are installed, the detail work can begin. Just below the dome on the facade of Helios Grand, the window and wall segments have been completed through all of the guest rooms. Work is now beginning on the opposite side of Epic Universe to wall in the amenities found on the roof. In the pool area of the resort, a base layer of sand is being added to the bottom of the pool shape in preparation to pour concrete. Guests staying at the Helios Grand Hotel will have their own dedicated entrance to Epic Universe, where there has been some new steel beams installed between their entrance and the show fountain. This bridge will go over the start of the waterfall that will feed into the main fountain of Epic Universe. Underneath the crane that was lifting those beams into place, the water splits into two paths and reconvenes just before entering the rocky waterfall that feeds the show fountain. Outside of both the Blue Dragon Pan Asian Restaurant and the Dark Universe Portal, new concrete courtyards are beginning to take shape. Between the known Starbucks location near the Oak and Star Tavern, a new foundation has appeared since we last visited. This circular foundation does not actually make a full circle though like the rest we have seen around Epic Universe. This could be some sort of weather cover, and the opening in the footers could be the entrance and the exit to this area. We will keep our eyes open for when steel starts to go vertical here. On the outside of the show fountain, one of the newly erected structures is receiving its initial roofing. Another building with roofing progress is Meteor Astro Pub, where two of the ends of the main part of the building have gotten gold accent similar in color to the base of the dome for Constellation Carousel. The floor for Celeste Tiki Bar has been poured as well, since last time out we saw the waterproofing layer at the bottom of the form. In between the two largest fountains of Epic Universe is the children's play area of Astronomica, where some additional concrete has been poured around the outermost water nozzles. Inside of the pond, at the base of Constellation Carousel, rock work is beginning at the end of the pond and the carousel. Also, inside of the basin, workers can be seen putting the cupola together for the top of the carousel. This means that the largest pieces of the carousel are in place since the top of the dome will be covered very soon. Just past the entrance and exit to Constellation Carousel sits the building which houses the Super Nintendo store as well as Pizza Moon. In the front of the Super Nintendo store sits a fountain where in the renderings we'll have spinning coins and a Mario statue on top. The main shape of this fountain has been completed. Looking from above, there is a large orange roof section on this building. This is the roof for Pizza Moon, and gives us a fantastic idea of how large each location will be. On the opposite side of Celestial Park, from the Super Nintendo Store and Pizza Moon, is the dueling launch coaster of Starfall Racers, where we now have video confirmation that the yellow track is now testing. The green track remains wrapped in plastic at the front of the coaster near the Comet. Rock work is being done in this area, so the green track will remain covered until the rock work is complete to prevent any unwanted damage to the green track. Near the entrance tunnel to the load station, walkways are beginning to form off of the courtyard, which has been covered for nearly two months. 
just to the right of the How to Train Your Dragon portal, some concrete has been poured for the footers of these quick service dining locations, which we know, thanks to Alicia from Theme Park Stop, one will be a Mexican dining location, and the other is still rumored to be an Italian dining location. Neighboring these dining locations are the collection ponds at the base of Atlantic Restaurant. Last update, we saw one of these ponds painted bright blue. Now this update, the second basin has been completely painted bright blue. No painting has begun in the central pond, however, it is a good bet that pond will be a blue color as well, since features on either side of it are currently blue. Transporting into the wonderful world of Super Nintendo World, there has been a lot of small details added throughout the land. Two piranha plants have been added to the land, one being around Yoshi's Adventure, and the second placed high above looking over Bowser's Fortress. Looking through the scaffolding at Bowser's Fortress, we can begin to see several areas being covered by purple exterior board, specifically on the leftmost turret and starting on the center turret. All around the upper level of the Mushroom Kingdom, there have been several shrubs planted in small raised garden beds. At the lowermost level of the Mushroom Kingdom sits one dining location which we have not talked about in quite some time. The entrance to Toad's Cafe has been sitting stagnant for quite a while, but this update we can see that there is now some theming going on in the exterior of the entrance. It is still to be determined when the mushroom cap will be placed on, but with the start of this theming, it should not be too much longer until we get to see that white and red cap. Inside of Donkey Kong Country, more detail work has been added along the coaster building, as well as more trestles have been added around the 180 the coaster takes at the end of the ride building. Work also continues on the roof for the golden head to be placed, as well as the preparation work for the barrel before it is lifted and installed. Starfall Racers was not the only coaster to be newly ride tested, as the Minecart Madness coaster has been seen testing as well. With that, this means that all four coasters in Epic Universe, minus the green track for Starfall Racers, have either been tested or are currently being tested. Sitting next to Super Nintendo World is the land based off of Universal Monsters, which is Dark Universe. In this update, there are several small details to note, but nothing groundbreaking physically or literally. The tower at the front of the village that we saw come to life a couple of updates ago is currently getting vines painted around its exterior. Towards the back of the village, closer to the feature ride of Dark Universe, scaffolding is starting to come down for the first time inside of the village. Soon, we should hopefully start to see more scaffolding removed like we have been seeing in the new Wizarding World. Speaking of the feature ride of Dark Universe, there have been several additional trees planted on the edge of the gatehouse courtyard that guests will use to enter the ride, as well as two curved walls that will guide guests into the manor. At Burning Blades, the scaffolding that we saw last update has grown slightly. This was expected since there was not a lot of scaffolding pictured last time out. Soon, we will start to see the blades added to give Burning Blades its name. Teleporting directly across Celestial Park from Dark Universe, guests will find themselves in the new Wizarding World of Harry Potter in the streets of Paris. Before even making it into the land, we can see several new plants and trees have been added on either side of the entry portal. There were some trees present last update, but since then, the vegetation has seen a tremendous growth. Inside of the Parisian streets, a new section of scaffolding has been removed, giving us another new look at some of the building facades. Near the 5 Street intersection, the foundation for the tent that will act as the entrance to the theater show is now visible. Down towards the end of the street, where the entrance to the Ministry of Magic is, we can see that the street is starting to be poured, working its way towards the intersection of the 5 streets. Next update, we should see this street completed, as well as the other streets being prepared to be poor. The last magical land we have not visited yet is the How to Train Your Dragon land at the Isle of Burke, where we have seen the most progress made visually over the last week. 
As guests enter the land, they are met by a massive lagoon and two large statues. That lagoon last update was just starting to be painted in a dark blue color. This time around, the entire lagoon has been painted minus a couple of small areas around some scaffolding still present around the edge of the lagoon. Just off of the lagoon, to the right as guests enter the park, sits Spitfire Grill, where we can see workers beginning to paint the sign. In the shadows of Spitfire Grill is the target boat ride thought to be named Fire Drill. The lagoon for Fire Drill has been filled to its operating level for the first time. Inside of the service channel, we can see the first boat in the water being covered by a tarp. The queue for Fire Drill has also seen more steel framing added and soon should start to see framing begin. The land's full service dining location, thought to be named Mead Hall, has seen a massive growth in vegetation on the rock work since we last checked in. Just in front of Mead Hall is an area where workers can be seen preparing for a new concrete pour. This area should not be for a new structure, but rather a new themed element. Time will tell as we see how it turns out. The general area around the pair of spinning rides continues to see the most visual progress made all around Epic Universe. A new structure has been built in front of the spinning rides, and it is thought that this structure will act as the entrance to the queue for these rides. Behind the spinning rides, the grandstand framing continues to be erected at a record pace. The framing appears to be about three quarters of the way complete. By the next time we check in, the main frame of the grandstands should be nearly 100% complete. As we get closer to the opening of Universal Epic Universe, we continuously are amazed by the detail that appears every update. Universal still has not given any more indication of a more specific opening date, but we should know later on this year. We do know that Universal will soon be releasing more details about Super Nintendo World in the coming weeks, thanks to Alicia at Theme Park Stop. If you don't already, be sure to subscribe to her channel for all of the most up-to-date rumors and permit information for Universal Epic Universe. That wraps up this week's Universal Epic Universe construction update. Again, I would like to thank BioReconstruct as well as Alicia for their continued hard work and effort they put in day after day. Do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next Universal Epic Universe construction update. And until next time travelers, have a great one.